This is the Microsoft Surface Book 2, and just like all the Surface devices we tore down this year, it did horrible on our repairability scale. How bad did it do? We gave it a 1 out of 10, which is just a little bit better than the Surface Laptop 0 out of 10, but that's not really saying very much. So today, I'm going to walk you through how to design a laptop tablet thing that's horrible for repair. You've got two options when starting with a Surface Book teardown. Do you start with the display tablet hybrid or the dock keyboard hybrid? Well, if you want to start with the easy one first, don't do either. They're both extremely glued together, but today we'll go ahead and start with the tablet. The opening procedure is pretty usual for a Surface, lots of heating and prying, and the glass is relatively flexible, but there is some real thick adhesive along the top edge, which required a lot of extra heating and prying. Once we're in, you can see the display cables are held captive by a snap-on bracket, which is difficult to remove, and even more difficult to remove without bending or breaking it. This is the 13.5-inch PixelSense display that has a resolution of 3000 by 2000 and a pixel density of 267 ppi. The sensor array bracket comes off next, revealing a couple of hidden screws holding the motherboard in place. And speaking of screws, there are a total of 11 T4 Torx screws holding the bracket in place, and then another 14 holding the motherboard in place. Even after all those screws, we're still connected to something underneath the motherboard, and since there's no clear answer as to what it is yet, we'll just settle for taking the speakers out. Turns out it was the two front-facing cameras, one infrared and one 5 megapixel, that were the reason the motherboard wasn't lifting up. They're both glued in place and sitting on posts, making prying them up and off pretty tricky. When you can finally lift it up and out, the motherboard is still connected to the headphone jack, the dock connector, and a couple other cables. But once we turn it over, we can finally figure out how to disconnect them. This board is home to the seventh generation Intel Core i5 processor with the integrated Intel HD Graphics 620 GPU. You can also see the eight gigabytes of SK Hynix made RAM. There is one bright spot on this teardown. This version of the Surface Book hasn't lost its removable storage. This is a 256 gigabyte Samsung PM961 SSD. The battery remains in the case since it's totally glued in place. This 18 watt hour, 2,387 milliamp hour battery uses a press connector that hides under the motherboard to get power to the tablet. This makes it extremely difficult to disconnect the power when attempting a repair. Lastly, we have the very cool docking mechanism that keeps your tablet secured to the keyboard when you're in laptop mode. This is the same system we saw in the first Surface Book and it uses a muscle wire lock. When electricity runs through the wire heating it up, it contracts, which pulls the black pulley inward against the spring, lifting the lower arm of the linkage. That lower arm holds a very tiny rod captive. The rod serves as a grip that holds onto the base unit's metal tab. When the linkage is retracted, the rod rolls out of the way and lets the base go. So that's it for the tablet. Let's take a look at the keyboard dock. Man alive, this thing is glued in place, not only around the edges, but all around the trackpad and across the middle of the panel. Getting this thing off without deforming it is a serious challenge. Not only that, but the battery is glued directly to the underside of the panel. So when you're heating the back panel to soften the adhesive, you're also heating up the battery, which is not fun. Once we got the back panel and the battery safely off and disconnected it, it turns out it has the same specs as the last Surface Book we took apart. 51 watt hours or 6,800 milliamp hours at 7.5 volts. The SD card reader and the dual USB board comes out as two modular units, which is nice, and we're left with our base's motherboard. This board was where we found the dedicated NVIDIA GPU last year, but since this model shipped with integrated graphics, there's none to be found here. So let's review for a minute. The Surface Book 2 scored a 1 out of 10 on our repairability scale for the following reasons. On the upside, after the difficult opening procedure, the SSD can be replaced. But let's get real, the display assembly consists of a fused glass panel and LCD and is difficult to remove and replace. The processor and RAM are soldered to the motherboard, and strong adhesive holds many components in place, including the display, base cover, and both batteries. And finally, many components are on the backs of their respective boards, requiring a motherboard removal to replace simple components. That's all for this teardown. Be sure to hit subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram so you have the latest repair and teardown videos in your back pocket for your next fix. I'll see you next time.